All right. How are we doing? Good? Yeah? Awesome. Hey, first of all, congratulations. You made it. It's 2019. You made it another year, right? If I'm not mistaken, wasn't the world supposed to end like four or five years ago or something like that, right? And here, yeah, here we are. We're still here. We're still kind of chugging along. Uh, what I wanted to do, the first thing I wanted to do that I told my wife I was going to do is I said, I have a great idea. You know, I'm not much on social media like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all that sort of thing. I don't really do all that. Um, I'm a little too old for that, I think. Um, But one of the things I said was like, hey, I want everybody, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have everybody take their cell phones out, and we're going to take one of those, like, you know, new year, new me kind of selfies, right? Because the last time I was on, you know, Facebook, like four or five years ago, those were a thing, but I've been informed those are not a thing anymore. Um, So she said, please don't do that. Please don't get made fun of. So we're not going to take new year selfies um, because I don't want you guys to laugh at me, but that's okay. I'm glad you're here, though. That being said, I'm so glad you're here. It's 2019, um, and it's something that I think that this year is, is big, not just for me, not just for a church, but, but for everybody in this room, I think. I feel like 2019 has something for each of us. So it has something that maybe you want to accomplish and succeed. Maybe it has something that you want to get better at, or maybe it has something that you've been preparing for for a long, long time that is finally here. So I think as we go through 2019, to have that sort of mindset of knowing, hey, you know, I'm, I'm on the right track. I'm going somewhere that I need to go. I'm on the right path. And if you're not, well, what better time is there than the start of a new year to get back on the right track doing something that you're, you know, think you're supposed to be doing or that sort of thing. So one of the things that I really sort of want to focus on uh, this morning is the new year, obviously. Um, when Pastor Frank asked me to, to do a New Year sermon, I was like, okay, cool, I can do that. Um, and of course, I wanted to do the sort of traditional, hey, you know, it's a new year, like, why don't we start something new? Or it's sort of the beginning of something new, right? All things new. Because the new year is the perfect time to start something. Just like Pastor Frank mentioned, we're starting the kind of reading through the Bible plan, the foundations uh, Bible reading plan. Perfect start for a new year. The new year is a great time to do that because it's always full of optimism, right? At the beginning of the new year, everybody's like, yes, 2019 is going to be the best year yet. I'm going to do the best things I've ever done in my life in 2019. I'm talking about New Year's resolutions, right? New Year's resolutions, everybody goes in with these highest hopes that I'm going to, you know, diet more or I'm going to make sure I get eight hours of sleep every night or I'm going to exercise at least three or four days a week, right? Like you go into the new year with full of optimism with these New Year's resolutions, And I see some of you out there kind of smiling or like elbowing the person next to you because you're six days in and you've already broken the New Year's resolution that you promised to yourself. But that's okay. Um, That is okay. It's okay to fail at the New Year's resolution. That's why I don't like resolutions all that much. Um, Not because I think they're dumb or because I think they're stupid, but because I basically set myself up to fail when I make a New Year's resolution. And I don't like to set myself up for failure. I fail enough as it is. I don't need to set myself up for that as well. But I love the sense of optimism that people have about the new year because it's the one time of year that I really feel like people actually think that they can start fresh. Uh, I don't really know what it is, maybe because it's just the calendar has turned or maybe because, hey, you know what, 2018, that, that was over there. That was that time, right? Like this is something new. What better to start something than at a new year? And I love that sense of optimism that people have. So I want to kind of take that optimism and take that sense of, um, I guess, beginning in newness and kind of cultivate that and kind of see what is it or what is some practical advice that we can use for the new year? What are some kind of things that we need to make sure that we keep in mind as we go into the rest of 2019? It's only been six days. And for some of you in this room, those six days have been awful, um, if we're being honest with yourselves, right? Like, for some of you, the new year has already been ruined. Maybe something that happened, a family situation, you know, whatever that looks like, job situation, whatever. And then for some of you, these six days have been the best six days of your life, right? So how do we take both of those people who are at different points in your life and at different points in the year and kind of bring you together and kind of rein you in and say, this is the trajectory for where you need to go for the rest of 2019. So what I want to talk to you about just for these next couple minutes is sort of how to do that. 
Um, and I think Paul gives some really practical advice in Philippians, which is where we're going to be. We're going to be in Philippians uh, chapter 3, starting in verse 14. Um, I'm sorry, starting in 13, I'm sorry. Um, so if you want to go ahead and turn there, you can. If not, it'll be on the screen, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but we'll be in Philippians 3.13. And one of the things that I love about this passage that Paul is writing is that he gives us some really practical advice on things to remember. Now, he is not talking from the perspective of a new year. I've sort of taken this and said, hey, this is actually pretty practical advice that we can use to go into a new year as well. So as he was writing this, he wasn't necessarily writing this for 2019, right? For, hey, 2018 is now 2019. Here's what I'm going to write for those people. However, I think that it is still very much applicable to, I think I said that right, applicable to us today, all right? So we're going to start, I hope you've had enough time to turn there or, you know, scroll there, whichever one you want to do. So we're going to start in verse 13. It says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. So after the first verse, I just want to stop right there. The first thing that Paul mentions, he said, but the one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, that's so important for a new year, right? Some of you in this room, a lot of you in this room, you had some pretty bad stuff happen to you in 2018, right? That, that's life. That's normal. Um, you've had bad things happen to you. Maybe you've had a bunch of failures. Uh, maybe you had the loss of a loved one or the loss of a broken family or something like that, or maybe a relationship or, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, like, you know what, some, some bad stuff happened to people in this room this year. Um, and unfortunately, that's, that's kind of the way life works. But the biggest thing that Paul mentions here is, hey, don't, don't, don't keep that with you, right? Like, forget what is behind. Forget all of that. Don't worry about what happened to you before. Um, the, the, the bad stuff is going to happen, yes, but you can't continue to sort of have this bad stuff in your mind at all times because bad things are going to happen, guys. Um, and I've been up here before many times saying to you, bad things are going to happen. And I've said this before as well. It's not necessarily the bad things that happen to you. It's how you respond to them is what matters. Because see, you can have a bad thing happen to you and you can sit there and you can feel sorry for yourself and you can dwell on it and you can say, oh, well, I'm just, 2019 is already ruined because I had something bad happen to me on day two, right? You can respond to it that way, sure. Or instead, you can forget about that. You can move past that and you can say, you know what? I'm not gonna let one thing ruin the rest of my year, the rest of my month, the rest of my week, the rest of my day even. I'll be honest, I'm really bad. If I have a bad morning, um, for those of you who don't know, I teach sixth graders. Um, if I have a bad morning um, at home or, you know, I just, I'm, when as soon as I get to school, like I have, I have a, like a mountain of work on my desk and I'm just upset, Sometimes I take that out on my sixth graders, and it's not good, right? Sometimes I let my bad day affect the way I do my job. Uh, and unfortunately, I deal with l little ones, so I, then I affect them, which is also not good, right? So I've really had to check myself with saying, hey, don't let one bad thing ruin the rest of your day. And I think that is applicable to us as well for the new year. Don't let one bad thing ruin the entire rest of the year, or better yet, don't let your really crappy 2018 ruin 2019 for you. Don't let the bad stuff that happened to you in 2018 ruin your chances for having a successful 2019. Because I promise you, if you go into this new year, if you go into 2019 with the same mindset and the same bad attitude you had because of the bad stuff that happened to you last year, 2019 is not going to be any better for you. It's all about your mindset. It's all about where your head's at. Because if you have a pretty sour attitude towards the world, then the world's going to be pretty sour towards you too. So you have to leave that stuff in the past. Don't carry your 2018 baggage into the new year with you. Leave it where it belongs. Leave it there. Because I promise if you carry it into 2019 with you, you still have it with you. We say all the time, oh, I, I want to forget about the bad stuff that happened. I, I don't, I don't want to deal with that stuff in the past. You know, it, it was awful. I hated it. 
then why are you still carrying it into the new year with you? All that's doing is prolonging the hurt, prolonging the pain, and prolonging the suffering, and it's causing your bad year you just had to affect your new year as well. And that kind of goes on to the second part of this verse where it says, forget what is behind and strain towards what is ahead. Strain towards what is ahead. I I like to think of the word strive towards what is ahead too, right? Like move on to something that is ahead because some of you in here have really awesome plans for 2019. Uh, Some of you may be getting married. You may be uh, having a baby. You may be building a house. You may be um, getting in a serious relationship. You may be getting a promotion at work. Like whatever that is, some of you have really awesome goals that are there for 2019 for you. Push on towards those, right? Strain towards those goals. Even if you had a really awful 2018, you got some awesome stuff ahead of you. Like take advantage of that. Push on towards that. You can't let one failure or two or three failures from 2018 affect your future successes, right? Because if you go into this new year thinking about the same failures that you had, you're probably pretty liable to fail again in 2019 because you still have that same mindset. I kind of like to think about it from, um, I'm a big sports guy, so I like to think about it from a sports analogy. Uh, Baseball was my sport. And one of the hardest things in sports to do, and this is a scientifically proven fact, by the way. Um, This is not something because I am biased to baseball. The hardest thing in sports to do is hit a baseball. It, It is sports science, ESPN, they've broken it down. You can YouTube it. The hardest thing in sports to do is hit a baseball just because of the distance and the speed and the velocity and all that sort of stuff. Did you know that the average Major League Baseball, like the top people doing this in the world, their average, their batting average, the average batting average is 250, meaning 25% of the time they get a hit. 25% of the time. And that's average for people. The above average is above 300, so about 30% of the time. Do you realize that 70 to 75% of the time in baseball, you're going to fail? And that's considered successful. That's crazy to me that 70 to 75% of the time in baseball, you are going to get up to bat and you are going to fail. And that's okay. You're still considered successful. But what would it be like if I'm that person, I'm that major league player who gets up to bat and says, I have a one in four chance, or I have a three in four chance of like not getting this hit, so I might as well just go sit down, right? I have a 75% chance of failure, so what's the point? Why even get up there and go? If you go with the mindset knowing you're gonna fail, or you go into the mindset saying, you know what, I might fail, I've had a really bad time, why even try, right? We wouldn't have baseball. We wouldn't have a lot of the sports that we have if people were scared to fail. Um, was it Michael Jordan in basketball? He said that uh, you miss every shot you don't take. or You miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? Don't be scared to fail. It's okay. You're going to fail. But don't let that affect your future success. If Michael Jordan all of a sudden decided, hey, I might miss, so I'm never going to shoot. <laughs> like, what kind of craziness is that, right? We do the same thing in our lives. We laugh because it's a sports analogy, but we do the same thing. We don't do, you know, stuff that may seem hard for us or stuff that we're scared of because we're afraid we're going to fail. Because we're afraid that we may end up doing something that may make us look bad or it may get us laughed at. So we don't do it. We don't push on towards that goal. We don't push on towards something that we know we could have if we were just not scared enough to go after it, right? So all of that to say is a roundabout way of saying, don't let your failures in 2018, if you failed a lot in 2018, like me, um, if you failed a lot, don't let that affect your new year. Don't let your past affect your future. Don't let your past failures affect your future successes. Because I promise you, God's got some really cool stuff for you in 2019. You just have to be ready for it. And you have to be ready to take it when he presents that opportunity, right? Now, another thing that we don't really talk about very often for for the new year is not only should we forget sort of our failures, 
But the new year is also a time to reflect on the successes you had, right? I've been up here just talking about how everybody had an awful 2018. And you're like, well, Jackson, I had a great 2019 or 2018. And that's great. I'm, I'm really happy for you. I'm so glad. And that's awesome. Um, I've heard a lot of success stories from not only just people in this church, but everybody saying, hey, 2018 was one of the best years of my life. And I'm super grateful for that. Um, and the new year is a great time to reflect on all that stuff, right? It's a great time to get with your family or get with your spouse or get with somebody, your kids maybe, and say, look at all the awesome stuff we accomplished in 2018. And that's great. That's a great thing to do when you move into the new year. But here's something that I think is important too when you do that. Now, I'm not saying forget all the great stuff that happened because you don't want to forget those successes. Those are huge. Those will be key memories and stuff one day. So don't forget them. But at the same time, don't let those successes sort of make you complacent in the new year, right? Like, don't let the good stuff that happened to you, don't be content with that. So that way, when God says, hey, but I got something even better for you over here, you say, no, I'm content over here. We had some pretty good successes. Let's just stay there, right? But God may have something better planned for you. So I'm not saying forget the successes because the successes are important. However, what I am saying is don't let those successes make you complacent. Don't let those successes sort of keep you saying, okay, well, we're good, we're comfortable, right? Because God has something planned for you maybe better than even your 2018. But because you're just stagnant and because you're standing there saying, no, I'm good, my family's good, we're happy, you're going to miss out. So it's not just about the bad that you want to forget, but it's also move on from that good stuff too. Build upon it, right? Good stuff doesn't happen to you so you can just accept it and be done with it. It's so you can build on those successes. It's so you can make it better and better and better. And that's what I would encourage you to do. If you were one of those people or one of those families who had a successful 2018, build upon it, right? Don't forget about it. Build upon it. Don't be complacent. Keep moving, all right? Ooh, that was a lot in one verse. All right, here we go. Verse 14. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus. So not only are we supposed to press on towards our own goals, our own personal goals, you know, whether that's get a promotion or start a family or get married or whatever, um, we're also supposed to press on towards the prize for heaven, right, for Christ Jesus. We're supposed to sort of keep striving, keep keep trying to attain that sort of Christ-like mentality of being the best Christian possible or being the most Christ-like figure we can possibly be. So this is just talking about, hey, keep building upon your Christian foundation. And this is exactly what we're doing as a church, like Pastor Frank just mentioned, with the foundation's kind of biblical series about learning the Bible and, you know, digging into the word and doing these small group studies and that sort of thing. That's exactly what this verse is talking about. Make sure you're um, sort of intentional in the new year about keep pressing on on that sort of Christ-like manner to gain that goal for winning the ultimate prize of heaven. Um, So that's all that's talking about there. And I think as a church, we're doing a really great job at that. So just to kind of echo what Pastor Frank just mentioned, if you have not picked up that foundation series, please do that. It's huge. It's crucial. All right. Verses 15. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. This is important. I want to stay on verse 17 real quick in those first two words. It says, join together. It talks about how we're all supposed to follow one another's examples. We're all supposed to join together as examples. Brothers and sisters, he's talking about the church, right? Not like Lake Point Church, like big church, like everybody church, right? Join together. And I'll be honest with you, as a big church, not, again, not Lake Point Church, but as a church, we don't do that very well as a bunch of other Christian people, right? Like, we don't play along together very well sometimes, um, as unfortunate as that is. Um, now, Lake Point, we, we do, I think we do a very good job, not just because I'm up here, but because we partner with other churches all the time. A bunch of events we do, we bring in other churches, we help other churches, um, we partner with other churches and ministries all the time. But there are other churches who don't necessarily do a good of a job, is that. 
And I'll tell you the one thing that really frustrates me and the one thing that 2018 has shown me that has just gotten progressively worse is Christians and people that I know, people that I have grown up with um, that are constantly just continuing to bash other Christians and other churches. And that's something that really just grinds on me because as a Christian, we're all supposed to work together, right? We're all part on the same team. We are all part of the same people group that is a, trying to achieve people and win people for God and win people for Christ. But yet all we're doing is arguing with each other. And I cannot stand it when I log on Facebook and all I see are people who are Christians commenting and attacking each other publicly for everybody to see. That's just something that I cannot stand. Um, because think about it from, a, um, from an unsaved person's perspective, right? If I'm a person who has never been in church, has no idea what a Christian is, and all I do is I scroll and I look on Facebook and I see people who are Christians attacking each other. From the outside, why would I ever want to become a Christian or talk to those people or go to church when all they do is fight with each other? Guys, if we can't get on the same team, we are never going to achieve the goal of winning people. If we continue to be at odds with each other, if we continue to bash people's like rituals because they do something a little differently than we do, or maybe they don't like the fact that we pray in this way and they pray in a different way, or you know, we baptize people in this way and they baptize people in that way. Right? If we continue to sort of kind of bash and argue with people, we're never going to achieve the goal. We got to play on the same team here. Now, the Bible does say, and I will admit, the Bible does say, hey, make sure you're holding people accountable and you need to hold people accountable. If, you know, pastors or churches are not doing something that is clearly against God's word, then yeah, you need to hold them accountable. But what I'm talking about is the stuff that goes on where people just maybe don't like that pastor and they talk bad about him or they don't like this person so they talk bad about the entire church because that person goes to church there. That's what I'm talking about. And if we ever want to change the way that this world is heading, if we ever want to bring our nation closer to Christ, then we all have to get on the same page as a church. We all have to play on the same team together. And that's what I would encourage you to do in 2019 is to make that a focus. And again, we do a great job at Lake Point Church. I'm not talking to us. Um, I'm talking to every sort of like the big C church, right? Like everybody, Christians in general, okay? Um, and that's just, that has really nothing to do with my sermon. But I just wanted to, as an aside, that's something that I, I couldn't read that and then just not talk about it because that's something that really pulls on me a lot. Um, so I wanted to throw that out there for you. Um, and I think, yeah, let's move on to 18 before I start saying something else I probably shouldn't. All right. Verse 18, for as I have often told you before and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. And if we could go back to um, verse 19, I think, please. Uh, just kidding, 20. There we go. But our citizenship is in heaven. This is huge, y'all. Our citizenship is in heaven. Here's the deal. There are a lot of things that happen in this world. There are a lot of things this world tries to tell us. But what we have to understand is we are called to something greater than that. We are called to something greater than just sort of living and surviving. We are called to live a life so much bigger than that. Because what's going to happen is the world is going to tell you a bunch of different things. It's going to give you a bunch of assurances about yourself. It's going to tell you, yes, this is what you need to do. And you need to do this, 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 and this. And you need to, don't worry about going to church. Um, organized religion doesn't matter. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You can worship Jesus at home by yourself and not have to worry about going to church. Like the world is going to tell you a bunch of stuff. But what you have to understand is that our citizenship does not lie with what the world tells us. Doesn't matter what you hear from movies, doesn't matter what you hear from magazines, doesn't matter what you hear from music, whatever. 
we have to know that the only thing that should matter to us is what God tells us and what he tells us through the Bible and what he tells us through prayer. All that matters <coughs> is God. All that matters is, hey, when we get to heaven, that's what matters. That's where our citizenship is. Because the world's going to tell you to acquire wealth, acquire a bunch of stuff, get a bunch of money, get a bunch of land. Cool. Well, as soon as you die, it's just going to stay there. It's not going to go with you, right? Your wealth is in heaven. What this world has done to us is it has made us a slave to things. It has made us a slave to certain things. For some people, it's different. Some people, it's money. Some people, it's uh, love. Some people, it's um, uh, being like uh, popularity, like being famous, right? Like you can be a slave to almost anything. And that's what the world has done. It's made us a slave to it, whatever it looks like. It takes the form of whatever we want. And we become a slave to that. And that makes us forget where our citizenship lies because we are so focused on being a slave to whatever it is that we want and whatever it is that we think we need. So another thing I would encourage you for 2019 is if you've become a slave to something, uh, if you've become a slave to something in 2018 or maybe even before that and you know that and you haven't addressed that, make 2019 the time that you do that. Now's as good a time as ever. Whatever it was that you were so obsessed with in 2018 that you know is not good for you, cut it off. Don't, cut, like, break free of those chains, right? Like, like don't, don't let that continue to hinder you any longer. It's just like Pastor Frank was talking about a uh, second ago, too, a revolution, right? A New Year's revolution. Like, totally change the way you're living if that's the case. Like, make, make new choices. Change it. Do something right? Don't be a slave to whatever that is any longer and realize that, hey, we are called to something greater than that. And there is something in 2019 for all of us, but if we continue to be slaves to those things, we're never going to find it because all we can see is what's in front of us. All we can see is what has us enslaved and what has us in chains, right? And I don't know about you, but I don't want that for the rest of this year. I had that enough last year. I don't want that again. So as we focus here on 2019, break those chains, right? Whatever that looks like for you. Again, it could be money, it could be love, it could be popularity, it could be famous, whatever. Break it, get rid of it. It's not helping you, I promise. And then in verse one, chapter four, verse one, it says, therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. The last thing that Paul leaves us with, stand firm in the Lord. Don't waver. That's something that I've noticed in 2018 and as we're starting to get through 2019 as well. A lot of people are seemingly just kind of abandoning their faith. Whenever something happens, they're like, ooh, yeah, I don't know. God kind of left me on that, right? God kind of hung me out to dry, so I'm just going to kind of leave him over here too. Or we have things that are happening all the time because we're not relying on God. We have things that happen all the time because we think that God isn't working, but he really is, but we sort of abandon him. We don't stay firm in that. We give up on God too soon. We let things distract us. We let other things destroy us. We let things come upon us that sort of get us away from standing and holding strong in what God has for us. And what Paul encourages us to do here is, Stand firm in the Lord and his ways. God's ways are his ways. Now, are they always the ways that we want? No. That's why they're his ways, not ours. If it was our way, we would be a lot worse off than we are right now, probably. Stand firm in his ways. So no matter what that looks like, even if you're struggling, if you're going through something, whatever it is, don't waver. Don't let the world distract you. Remember your citizenship is in heaven and remember that God always works in the ways that he wants them to work. Stand firm in that. The last sort of verse here that I wanna share with you is not in Philippians, but this is sort of the verse that I want to sort of bring everything together and drive this point home. And it's in Isaiah. It's in Isaiah 43. And it's gonna be verses 18 and 19. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. 
Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams and the wasteland. Don't dwell on the past mistakes that you've made. Go back to verse 18 for me, please. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. That's what we just talked about. If there's one thing that you get from me today, and if there's one thing that I need you to understand, leave 2018 in 2018, right? We hear those cheesy, corny New Year sayings all the time, but there's actually truth wrapped up in them. Whatever happened in 2019, the bad stuff, leave it there. And here's what I would encourage you to do. Whatever baggage you walked in with, whether it was a little backpack, whether it was like a little like purse, or whether it was like you were towing like a huge little thing of luggage here, right? Like a massive thing of luggage. Whatever baggage you brought, leave it where you're sitting. Don't take it out that door with you when you leave. It doesn't belong in 2019. It belongs exactly where it happened and exactly where it should stay in 2018. And the last part of that verse in verse 19 It said, I am doing a new thing. Do something new, whatever that looks like. Do something new. That may be new. That may be something different for all of us. Whether it's you want to totally change your life. Maybe you know you have not been living the way you need to live. Change it. Maybe it's just working on yourself for change. Maybe you've been trying to please everybody else and you're not focusing on yourself. Focus on yourself for a change. Do something new. Whatever that looks like for each person in here, do something different. Now, even if your 2018 was successful, awesome. I'm happy for you. But you need to continue to build on that. Do something new and build upon that, right? So here's what I wanna do. I don't, I don't need to, I, want, I wanna stop for a minute. Because I think this is important. And I think this is something that needs to happen. What we're gonna do in a second is, I'm gonna ask Austin if if he'll play a song. And while he does that, here's what I want from you. We just talked about how the best time to forget and relive and move on is the new year. And that's what I want us to do. So as he plays, I'm gonna give you time in a minute to focus on that. And here's what I mean. If you're that person who brought in that duffel bag full of baggage, I want you to pray and I want you to leave that where it's at. I want you to pray and say, God, please let me leave this duffel bag where it is and please don't let me take it out that door. And if you're somebody who had a successful 2018, say, God, what can I do to improve upon that? What can I do to make sure that I am better in this new year? And maybe that's, individual, maybe that's as a family, maybe that's as a spouse or maybe as a loved one. I don't care what that looks like. Maybe you had some awesome successes as a family. Maybe as a family, you guys grew leaps and bounds together. Maybe you became closer or maybe you added somebody new to the family. If you wanna pray as a family and thank God for that, do it and pray together as a family. Say, how can we grow even more in this new year? Or maybe as a family, you lost a member of your family. And maybe that's hard. Maybe you guys grew apart as a family in 2018. And you guys want to get together and pray and say, guys, I'm sorry for whatever we did. I'm sorry for the 2018. Please do not let us bring that 2018 mentality into the new year. If you want to gather as a family and pray, do it. If you and a loved one want to, as a spouse or as a significant other, whatever that looks like, maybe you and just a child, I don't care. Whatever you want to do, and you want to pray with somebody, that's fine. You can come down here, pray. You can pray where you're sitting. You can move all around. I don't care what you do, but I want you to take time and reflect on 2018, whether it is good or bad. If it's bad, pray that God will let you leave it there. And if it's good, how can we build upon that? So as Austin sings, I want you to just take a minute Do whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's individual, as a family, I don't care, like I said. Just take a minute and reflect. Now's as good a time as any. Now's as good a time as any for you to look back and say, God, what can I do differently? 